Are you looking for a mid-sized torque wrench at a great value? You may want to check this out. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. We have today the AC Delco Tools ARM 601-4, which is their torque wrench, electronic torque wrench. Goes from 15 pounds up to 150 pounds. And that's from 20 newton meters up to 200 newton meters. Now this is kind of a, what I would call a mid-size and a half inch torque wrench. Usually a lot of your, uh, at least your half inch torque wrenches, they'll go from 50 foot pounds all the way up to 250 foot pounds, which is great for doing that, you know, upper end stuff like, uh, you know, wheels and tires and uh, larger engine components, things like that that require that, you know, 200 foot pounds. But really a lot of the stuff you're doing, even in engine building and ar around a vehicle, other than wheels and tires are gonna be below that 100 foot pound range. So those larger wrenches miss that window that's down in that, you know, 25, 30, 40, 45 foot pounds. And we'll explain this in the feature section, uh, but basically, typically your torque wrench is, the range is from 20% up to 100%. So that bottom 20% of a torque wrench range, you really shouldn't count on that calibration or it to be really good in that, in that window. Now talking about calibration, we'll deal with that in this feature section as well, but make sure you always have a calibration card with your torque wrench. Hey, let's get started. Let's get a closer look at this torque wrench. Then we'll come back after we used it and we'll talk about price, warranty, and what we think about it. We have the AC Delco Tools ARM 601-4 torque wrench. This is a half inch drive torque wrench and it's kind of middle of the range when you look at a, a lot of your electronic torque wrenches in the fact that this is 15 pounds to 150 pounds. Really, it's, I think it's like 14.7 to 148 or something like that. But anyway, let's just call it 15 to 150. A lot of the half inch drive torque wrenches go up to that 250 pound range, but they're not good down at the low range. They'll start somewhere around, you know, 40 foot pounds or something like that. With this one going all the way down to 15, this gives you a lot better range of the typical uh, fasteners that you'll be facing, especially when it comes to vehicles. Typically you're in that under hundred pound range until you get into wheels and tires and then you need that larger wrench. So this covers that middle ground, but also offers you a half inch drive anvil and not just a three eighths. Also, when you look at electronic torque wrenches or torque wrenches in general, typically they're calibrated at that 20% to hundred percent range. So in other words, uh, they're really not recommended to, to use at the very low range. So at that 14 foot pounds, that's really not where you want to be. You want to reach for a smaller torque wrench when you need to be down there. And then when you get up to that, you know, uh, 10 pounds above that, say 25 to 150, that's where this is really going to dial in and, and uh, meet its mark. Here's an example here, uh, not an example. Here's actually the calibration sheet for this torque wrench. By the way, never buy a torque wrench if you don't get a calibration card with it. Uh, and you'll see here that this calibrated really well, in fact, within plus or minus 1% across the board here, both clockwise and counterclockwise. That's another item to look out for is make sure that your torque wrench is also calibrated in counterclockwise or typically, you know, left-handed threads, if you will, for, for tightening left-handed or reverse threaded uh, fasteners. Something else interesting is that even though this offers inch pounds, foot pounds, and newton meters, the calibration card here is set in newton meters. So you'll see here that it goes from 40 to 200. That's not going over because this is only 150 foot pounds, but that's 200 newton meters. Uh, and you see it's calibrated at 40, 80, 120, 160, and 200 newton meters. And then you see the error right here, um, which again is at plus or minus percentage. We're less than 1% all the way across the board. So that is very good. Typically, you know, plus or minus 3% is, is uh, acceptable. And you see here the tolerance here is clockwise 2% and counterclockwise plus or minus 3%. And we're well within that range. So again, very important to have your calibration card and to know that your torque wrench has been calibrated and is dialed in to, uh, to be good to go. Now, in addition to the calibration card, you also get this case here. Uh, with the ARM 601 and by the way you can tell it probably fits a larger torque wrench as well and just nice hard case to have in your toolbox 
to protect that torque wrench so that it's not getting banged around and getting hurt. There are other electronic torque wrenches that get rather complicated, uh, but this is a very simple one. This does not do angles, this just does torque. Um, we have a power button right there, you see the power symbol. You hold that down for a couple of seconds and it turns on the screen. And then you see we, we have foot pounds there uh, and we also have the P and the T. Now the P is peak, so that's gonna show you the peak torque uh, that you've had for you know, that sequence of events. So as you're using it until this turns off, it's going to show you the peak torque uh, when it's at P. Now at trace, that's gonna show you your real-time torque. So as you're tightening something, it's gonna show real-time torque. When you let off of it, it's gonna go back to zero. So trace and peak, typically I like to leave it on peak so I know exactly how far I've gone, especially if I, I have to let up and come back to it. I want to know where have I been to and see that peak torque. Now if I want to change the units here, I can hold the SU button down for two seconds and that's where I can change the numbers here, change the newton meters, inch pounds, foot pounds, and kilogram centimeters. So I'll bring that back to foot pounds and then I can just let it sit and it will go back and set itself. Even though that went back to zero, it's actually set at 40 foot-pounds or that 40.7, whatever, 40.4. Um, so it's saving that, but it's going back to zero ready for you to use it. That's really all there is here. So to set it, hold this down for two seconds. You set both your, your poundage or, you know, what you want your peak torque to be. And then also you can change your scale of, uh, of torque there, some newton meters, inch pounds, foot pounds, kilograms, centimeters, and then also your trace or your peak torque. So that's really it. And by the way, even when it turns off, so we can turn this off. So even when it turns off and we'll turn it back on here, it will save that setting. So it's still at 42 foot pounds like we left it. So even though you're turning it off, it's going to save the last thing that you, uh, that you set for the memory. There are no memory settings. It doesn't have a memory function where you can like set 10 different, uh, 10 different amounts. Um, but it does save whatever you've done last. So let me make a recommendation here. I'm going to open up the tail end of this where you put in the batteries and it's just two Phillips screws. I'm using number one, number two would probably work fine as well. And so let me make a recommendation here. This runs on four AAA batteries. I'm not crazy about that because triple A's are just always a pain and they're always expensive, but that's my recommendation here on Amazon. And I'll put a link in the description for this too. This is a simple, uh, I believe these are lithium ion, if I'm not mistaken, uh, regardless, whatever they are, they're rechargeable AAA batteries. They last just as long as the alkaline batteries do. And then I keep this in my toolbox and this will, will charge both AAA and AA. I think it was 16 bucks to get eight AAAs and the charger. And I think I can get eight AAAs for just like 11 bucks without the charger. So definitely recommend this. And then I've always got four that are charged. I use this in my camera equipment, my sound equipment, as well as things like our, my torque wrenches. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore because then when it dies, you've got a set on charge already and you don't have to go hunting down or worse than that, running down to the, uh, to the Walmart or convenience store and paying you know, 12, 14 bucks for a pack of AAA batteries. As far as size of this guy, um, you can see here, right at 17 inches, a little more than 17 inches, about 17 and a quarter inches lengthwise. And across the head, which this is not one of those tools that you're really looking to save space, but a little less than one and a half inches across the head and depth wise, a little less than three quarters. So not by any means a huge uh, torque wrench. In fact, as I mentioned, for a half inch drive torque wrench, it's a pretty short one, nice and compact. Let's go use this. Okay, one thing I did notice is the screen does not light up, um, but it's not a big deal. I can see that very easily. I just don't know uh, with the camera if it shows well enough. 
Uh, but again, just wanted to make sure there is no backlight on the uh, LED screen or LCD screen on this torque wrench. So if you're in a dark place, uh, that may be an issue. But again, it's, I don't think it's going to be an issue, typically when you're using a torque wrench. Um, but anyway, just wanted to make that comment. So I'll zero this out and then let's uh, change this torque. We'll go up to 50. There we go. So we got 50 foot pounds. And by the way, if you just let it sit for a couple of seconds, it'll zero out. And now we're ready. And we're seeing our peak torque on here. And there we know, okay? So I have this on trace and you see it's gone back to zero. So let's change that. Okay, so now I'm on peak torque. And we'll go to this one. And now we'll see, we're seeing peak torque there. And now 50.3. So now it's kept my peak torque on there until that zeroes out but it's not going back to zero. It's actually showing what the most I've done is. So if I go back on here and I go even higher, now we're going to 63.3. So I like seeing that peak torque better than seeing the trace torque. Clear that out and let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a hundred pounds. See, it starts going faster after you hold it down for a second, a couple of seconds. Okay, so now we're at 100 foot pounds. And you see, as I get within like 10% of the value, so you'll see at like 90 foot pounds, that's when I start getting the audible beep and the red LED start lighting up. And there we go. Really simple electronic torque wrench. Um, not a lot of bells and whistles, but for the price, I expect that. Uh, built very solid. I'm not feeling any flex in here through the handle, even though it's a plastic handle. I'm not feeling any flex. We've got no nice rubber overmolding here. Um, so again, that nice mid-range electronic torque wrench in a half-inch anvil. Push-button anvil, by the way, so you can release those sockets very easily. Don't have to worry about pulling those off and simple directional lever here, Sue. So not, not over complicated whatsoever. Let's go talk about price and warranty. All right, here's the deal on this. This is a very slim down torque wrench. What do we mean by that? It's very simple. It does basically peak torque, trace torque, and that's about it. But that's generally what you need in an electronic torque wrench. So if this is your first step into electronic torque wrenches, this would be a great opportunity for you to use one, especially at the value that you can buy this at. This is 99 bucks. So you can get this on Amazon for $99 and it comes with a one year warranty. It does your peak torque, it does your trace torque, it does not do angle finding or any other bells and whistles. However, they do have torque wrenches that do all of that. In fact, we reviewed one way back, I believe it was 2016, 2017, in fact, it was one of our first YouTube video reviews, and that torque wrench is still around today working very well. So it's not that AC Delco Tools can't make a torque wrench like that. They absolutely can. That's going to be more expensive. But this at less than 100 bucks, and it does what you need, and again, it stays in that mid-range, what I would say, uh, a lot easier to handle this than any longer, bigger torque wrench. This is probably not one you want to put wheels and tires on with, but you absolutely could do that. It's just not going to have as much leverage as a larger torque wrench would be. As I mentioned earlier in the video a couple of times, but I will stress it again, make sure you get a calibration card with your torque wrench, especially if you're buying it new. Not especially if you're buying it new, if you're buying it used too, otherwise this thing is trash. If you don't know that 50 foot pounds is 50 foot pounds, you could damage something way more expensive than any torque wrench that you're going to buy. So make sure you get that calibration card. And if you are buying something used, make sure it's been calibrated recently. This one was in within 1%, which is pretty unheard of. Usually they're within plus or minus, you know, 2% and they're always over that 1% range somewhere in the list. And this did not do that. It was dead on all the way through the calibration. So great job on that. 
Um, I would recommend buying some rechargeable batteries for it because it does use the, uh, the AAAs and we just find it easy if we have a spare set that are on the charger ready to go in, uh, any of our equipment that use those things, that's what we recommend. So we'll have a link in the description for that as well. Hey, check this out. Again, it's the AC Delco Tools ARM 601-4. As I mentioned, $99. You also get a one-year warranty with this. And they've been around quite a while. It may not be something that you see all the time on the shelves, uh, but trust me, the company, they make tools for other companies as well. So great little torque wrench. Check it out for yourself. Uh, also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button? if you haven't done so already. And as always, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.